Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon EOS C100 video tutorial series. In this video we're going to be talking about the waveform monitor, gammas, and custom pictures. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the waveform monitor, a fantastic tool to help you judge exposure when you're out shooting with the camera system. And the way we access that is here on the side of the camera, button 11, WFM for waveform. Press that once and the waveform monitor will now show up on the display. Now currently what we have is we have the camera pointed at a grayscale chart so that you can really see what the waveform monitor is doing. So let me just explain this to you and in fact I have a larger version of a waveform monitor over here so you can see it as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at this waveform monitor and just to show you on the C100 the second line from the bottom represents zero on the scale. The second to last line from the top represents 100 and that's really the area that we're most concerned about when we're looking at our luminance values because that's what a waveform monitor is showing us. It's not showing us chrominance information or color information it's only showing us luminance and when we're looking at this chart over here it's a basically an X and a Y representation of what the camera is seeing the X part of it is the left to right so it's actually what the camera is seeing in left to right in the frame the vertical part is actually showing us our luminance levels so if we take a look at this right now if we look at this black chip here that is on the chart that is represented over here at zero or zero over here on the waveform monitor if we want to take a look at where the white chips are falling right now they're falling at just under 80 they don't necessarily have to sit at 100 on the waveform monitor and then all of our other steps here are represented as our grayscale steps so we see over here this dark grayscale step that's right here the next one here luminance wise moving up 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 and then over here we have this dark chip here that's represented down here on the right hand side because it's in the right hand side of the frame and then as we move to the left here those are mapped here and the luminance values go up on the y-axis so that's how the waveform monitor works let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of other things if I pan the camera right now to the wall behind it we can actually take a look and see that the wall right now in terms of its luminance level based on the way the camera is set right now is falling at about 30 IRE so that's its luminance level with the settings right now if I change the ISO or aperture in the camera in fact let me just change the ISO you'll see that the camera is now more sensitive to light so the luminance level of where that wall is falling is actually changing and so when we're trying to get correct exposure when we're shooting something we can actually start to change our light levels we can start to change what's happening with our camera and our environment and then we can get correct exposure by mapping where things should fall so let me go ahead and change that ISO back to where it was before go back to the chart here and then I want to open up the custom picture menu and show you what happens when we change gamma curves in the camera change custom pictures which are based on different gamma curves and you can see how it remaps the luminance values inside of the camera so let's go ahead and access the custom picture menu again we just get to that on the side of the camera by pressing this button custom picture it is a separate menu from the normal menu system on the camera and if I go in here now I'm going to use the joystick I'm going to press on set make sure I'm on camera go to the right and then I can cycle through the different custom pictures on the camera right now I'm going to pan back to the chart here and I am right now on CP1 it's actually a slightly modified version of CP1 which we'll talk about in a minute and we can see that now that we've changed our custom picture that different things are falling at different places on the waveform monitor black is still hanging out at about zero and then we can see that using this custom picture that at the moment and I'm not saying we have correct exposure but right now gray or middle gray is falling at just above 30 here on the chart and let me go ahead and change my aperture here okay and we can see sort of where that's falling and we can see here that now that I've opened up the lens a little bit that things are falling in a different place I know that when I'm using something like custom picture one which is based on the normal gamma curve that my middle gray should fall somewhere between 40 and 50 on the waveform monitor so we're probably pretty close to correct exposure right now when we are set this way 
And then our other things are mapped. As you can see here, our whites are sitting at around 80. We have our middle gray there at around 40, almost 45. And then we've got our black just floating just above zero. Let's take a look at a different custom picture. We'll go back into custom picture. I'm going to go ahead and scroll right again. And then let's go up here to EO standard. Big change here. You'll actually see a big jump on the waveform monitor. And so we'll see that our middle gray is going to fall right at about 50 if we're correctly exposed on the waveform monitor. Again, black is hanging out just above zero. And then over here, we've got our whites. They tend to be sitting a little bit higher on the waveform monitor. They're up at 90 right now in EO standard. So we're getting a more extreme S-curve where our blacks are a little bit more crushed. We're getting more of our whites up in the highlight area. Basically a more contrasty image. Now we're going to go ahead and change it to YDR. In YDR, we're hanging out, I would say, at around between almost at 45 uh, right now you'll see that the blacks have actually lifted a little bit above zero, which is not always bad. We want to see into those shadows. Uh, but look at where whites are. They've actually been brought down to around 70. So we're basically taking our range here with this gamma that we're using inside of the camera system, and we're remapping stuff so that we make sure we capture all of that information so that in post-production, if we do in fact want to do more with that image, we can do it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at something else here. We're going to now go to Cinema. Cinema is based on Canon Log. Look at what happens here. Black is moving all the way up. In fact, I'll step out of here so you guys can see this on this waveform monitor as well. Black is moving all the way up to almost 20 on the waveform monitor. And look at where middle gray is. It's just above 30 here. It's at about between 32 and 33. And look at where whites are they're hanging out just above 50 on the waveform monitor. So we're taking those blacks to whites and we're pushing them into a much more confined space. So the reason that we do that is when you're using the cinema custom picture or you're using cinema locked in the camera setup menu, you really want to make sure you're getting the maximum dynamic range and then when you get into post-production you have a lot to work with if you're going to grade the image. So uh, really interesting to see that stuff. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into custom picture. I'm going to go back down here to, I'll just choose CP1 for now so you guys can take a look at that. And now you can see that it's remapped where things are sitting on the waveform monitor. Next thing we're going to talk about is why we might change a custom picture inside of the camera system. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the custom picture menu with somebody in frame and then we'll also go in and make a couple of modifications to one of the custom pictures so you guys can see that. I'm actually going to have Peter go ahead and access the custom picture menu. So what we're going to do is scroll up and go to, let's go to EO standard right now and take a look at that. So you can see that that image is much more contrasty than what we had with CP1. Let's go ahead and come out of the custom picture menu so we can see the waveform monitor on the C100 display and you can see that things are completely different in terms of stuff. Definitely notice it here on the highlights and that'll actually be sitting much much higher on the waveform monitor and it'll just look like a more contrasty image and you'll have to make some adjustments potentially for that. But as long as you're correctly exposed that's the way this custom picture is designed to look anyway. Let's go into the custom picture menu again and we're going to scroll up and we're going to take a look at YDR and you'll see that YDR creates a very very pleasing look a really really nice curve and it has by the way each custom picture also has its own color matrix it's kind of crazy what you can do you can really dig in there and create crazy looks inside of the camera but because of the ones that are already in there already those are the ones that you're probably going to shoot with 90 to almost 100 percent of the time so step out of the custom picture menu and we can see that things are falling differently on the waveform monitor with YDR than they were with EO standard and then let's go ahead and go to cinema um, and take a look at that so now we're in cinema an incredibly flat image so when we look at the waveform monitor using cinema which is based on the Canon log gamma you'll see that my highlights and stuff are sitting much closer to 50 
and if you remember when we were looking at the grayscale chart, middle gray using this particular custom picture sat at about 32 or 33. So remember that when you're using different custom pictures or you're switching between different gammas that you have to be very careful and trust your waveform monitor but trust it based on knowing where middle gray is supposed to fall because if you always think that middle gray is supposed to fall at 50 on a waveform monitor and you're using something like cinema or the cinema locked mode in the camera setup menu then you may actually be exposing for your middle gray in the wrong place. So just important to note when you're doing stuff. So let's go ahead and go back into the custom picture menu. We're now going to cycle up to uh, CP1 again. It's based on the normal gamma curve and it is also based on the normal color matrix which we'll take a look at right now. So we're going to go in and there's a couple of options in the C100. The first one we want to go into is called CP and that's custom picture and there's two options in there. One of them is gamma and the other one is white balance. We're going to go into the white balance section and you'll see a visual representation of white balance and one of the reasons that you might want to use this is when we're in certain lighting situations we may have certain lighting fixtures that are skewing a little bit green or you may be looking at the picture that is on the screen and seeing that it is a little bit green. So let's go ahead and in the white balance let's add one magenta. So we're just going to go ahead and use the joystick and just go down one step and you'll see that it now reads 1M and we've added one magenta to that custom picture. Okay so now let's go ahead and step out of that and we'll just take a peek in the gamma section of CP and if you look at that you'll see that there are different choices in terms of changing the overall gamma curve of your image which do relate to the gamma curves that you'll see in the fine adjustments later on. Just refer to the manual if you want to dig into that a little bit more. So we're going to jump out of CP now and we're going to go down into the fine adjustments and we're going to scroll down and the first area that we're going to go into is the gamma area. I just want to take a look at that very briefly so you guys can see that. If we go into gamma you'll see that gamma is set to normal right now I'm going to have Peter cycle through some of these gamma curves so you can see what happens. So pretty dramatic, right? Uh, and this is really what we're seeing when we were changing those custom pictures as well. They're based on these different gamma curves and you can see how that affects what you're seeing in the image. Let's go back to normal one, which is the default for this particular custom picture. And then we'll go ahead and step out of there. And then we're going to go to black under fine. And inside of black, we're going to choose master pedestal and go into master pedestal. And this is what's affecting the overall black level of your entire image. And what we want to do is we're going to push that down a little bit so that it falls just a little bit lower on the waveform monitor. So let's go ahead and take master ped and maybe drop that to a, a minus two. And let's see what happens with that. Okay, and let's step out of custom picture and see on the waveform monitor and we should be floating pretty close to zero on the waveform monitor for our black level. Is that correct? Right. Cool. Okay, great. So let's go back into custom picture. We're going to go back into fine for CP1. So when we get to that, we'll go ahead and make a couple of other adjustments. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make a little tweak to the low key saturation setting and what that does is it, it basically targets the color saturation in dark areas but we've also found that it's a nice little tweak sometimes when we are setting up a custom picture. So we'll go into low key saturation, we have to make sure that it's turned on and then when we go into the setting for low key saturation, it's default is zero but it's a minus 50 to a plus 50 setting. Let's go to minus 50 to see what that looks like. So as you can see it's a pretty drastic change. What we want to do is back off on that and we're going to do it very very subtly. Uh, let's go back to zero and then we're just going to drop it down a little bit somewhere between a minus 5 and a minus 10 and see how that looks. Um, believe that the last time we shot in this studio with similar lighting we were like a minus six or a minus seven so let's try something like that and lock that in and then we're going to step out of that menu and we're going to go to the color matrix menu and I want to show you what happens when you change the color matrix 
which unlike gamma, which is really handling how our blacks to whites are mapped, color matrix is really targeting our chrominance or our color. So I want you to go into color matrix and just start to cycle through. And the thing that you'll notice is that they match the gamma curves. So we've got normal one, normal two, we have our cines, we have our YDR, our EO standard, our Canon log, and you can see as we're cycling through these, so a drastic change in terms of how things look. We're going to go back to normal one now, back out of this, and we're just going to make one other tweak here. So remember the only things that we've actually done so far is we've taken the master pedestal and we've dropped that to minus two. We've gone into the low key saturation and dropped that to a minus six or a minus seven. And now we're going to go into the white balance setting and we're going to go ahead and make a tweak to that. And all I really want to do is I want to punch up the blue just a little bit in the image. So under the white balance settings, we're going to take blue and we're going to do a little plus there, maybe a plus two, three or four, somewhere around there. And it's a subtle change, but it'll actually punch up that blue just a little bit in the image. Just these minor tweaks though, that one magenta in the CP menu, just to take a little bit of green out of the image dropping the master ped, low key saturation, and then this plus on the blue white balance. Those are the little tweaks that allow you to create a custom picture that you could use, shoot with, and then just go direct from your NLE to spitting that stuff out. Um, if you're looking for a custom picture that you can just sort of set the camera to, and you just want to shoot and get a great image and not have to grade, YDR is a great option for that. Cinema is a great option if you want a flatter image that you can grade in post. So hopefully that gives you guys a great overview of working with the waveform monitor, understanding gammas, and custom pictures with the EOS C100.